Hey, Stewart's Chapel, this is Don Pearson and Don Counts. And um, this is uh, Thursday, December the 23rd. Now, I don't know whether you, is this the first time you're coming into the midst of this series? Yesterday, we started a series that's going to take us several weeks. It was actually a sermon series that I did several years ago about in the presence of predators. Uh, yesterday, all we dealt with was the warning and the preparation that Paul does to the elders or the leaders of the church of Ephesus. Um, today's devotion, I, I really just want to lay out these six things because over the next few weeks, the, this is my goals. My, the goals in talking about in the presence of predators over the next um, few weeks is I want to t share with you the, uh, I want you to reveal their identity. I want to reveal their nature. I, I, feel, I believe I need to reveal their goals. I, I believe God wants me to reveal their master. I think God wants us to deal with revealing their hunting grounds and to reveal their ways or wiles. Depending on what translation, sometimes it'll say wiles or ways. And so that's the goal over the next few weeks. Now, um, t uh, yesterday we started with Ephesians, I mean, with Acts chapter 20. I keep saying Ephesians. The reason is it's written to the church of Ephesus. But we looked at Acts chapter 20, verse 17 through 38. Yesterday, it's known as Paul's farewell letter. He has, he has sent a letter to the, to the leaders, not to the church, to the leaders of the church of Ephesus, and invited them to come to him. And he gives this warning and preparation. Now, he does a lot more in this. Generally, this section is just talked about in relationship to Paul's farewell. A lot of times preachers, will, when, they're, when it's their last Sunday or they're getting ready to leave, they'll go to this scripture. Uh, it's not so much the farewell that I believe was Paul's primary purpose. And so, I want to look in verse 28 of chapter 20 of Acts and um, listen to the warning. I, I read it already. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So let me just stop there. This in the presence of predators, though it was a message to the whole church, I believe at that time and even now that it was primarily a message that I was speaking to myself and to, to my deacons. That it was a message that God intended for the leaders, but it was also intended for the fathers and the mothers, a, a warning for preparation for battle that was coming. The enemy was on his way. And, uh, and that's what it is here. So it's very important to, to notice that Paul believes that he has a mandate from God to deliver this message to a very specific audience, the overseers and the shepherds of God over God's flock. It says, for I know this, I know with certain, beyond a doubt, this is what's going to happen. That after my departure, savage wolves, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. And so verse 31 introduces us to a thought that evidently for three years, Paul not only proclaimed the gospel, not only worked in making them mature, but this message of coming danger was so strong, so ingrained by the Holy Spirit into Paul's life that for three years he has warned them. And here in his departure from them, he makes sure that they understand, especially the leaders, 
that wolves are coming. Wolves are coming. And so today, I know it sounds a lot like yesterday. I wanted to let you know that as we go on, we're going to be talking about, it's all about revealing. It's all about the revelation of God. God shining light in the direction of where the enemy and so I would encourage you, if you're a pastor, I know some pastors listen, some leaders of God's church, leaders of your family, ask God for revelation. Ask Him to shine light, not only at what He is doing, and not only at what maybe the devil is doing, but what is about to come. Paul is able to deliver this message three years in advance because God, God had revealed to him as a leader. And he, because he had a revelation, he reveals it to the leaders, to the overseers of the church. You know, just a thought. You would think that if you had three years of warning and preparation, you would be ready for when the enemy comes. Well, the truth is, they had plenty of warning. But as we look over the next few devotions, we'll find out that the wolves still ravaged the church of Ephesus. Don't let the wolves ravage your family or your church. Don't let God have to look at you and say, you know, I, I told you. I tried to awaken you. Over the last few years, I've dealt with more than more divorce in families than I would like to like to deal with. But in almost every case where there has been signs of the ravaging of the savage wolves. In those marriages, one of those couples will say to me, I should have saw this coming. Or I sensed or I knew. It's interesting that the one of the common words that God uses in this section of scripture that we read from 17 to 38, the common word is no, 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 no. There will be no excuse for the church of Ephesus for not being prepared. They had plenty of knowing. Love you. Seriously,